Hello everyone, I think it's been like two years since I made my last video, but here I am again. I've had some recent inspiration to start this YouTube channel up again. Today I wanted to talk again about my favorite book called How to Find Your Soulmate Without Losing Your Soul, 21 Secrets for Women. It's by Jason and Kristalina Evert, and this gives a ton of good advice for females who are in the dating world right now trying to find their soulmate. So I'm going to start with the beginning of the book where they give a list of the top 10 guys to avoid. Okay, number one is the flip-flopper. This is the type of guy who can't make up his mind. He's always in a relationship, but he's always your ex-boyfriend. You don't even know if you're dating him. If you don't know what this guy's intentions are, then why waste time? Number two, the problem child, aka the fixer-upper. This is the guy who comes from a troubled family or has difficulties at school. He Maybe he has addiction. He has a history of violence. A bad boy type of situation. You get the idea. Relationships are not the place to fix a guy. This is, uh, this is a quote from the book. Relationships are not the place to fix a guy. Don't assume that they're going to change, and don't try to change them either, because that can be a sticky situation. You're not a therapist. You are a girlfriend. You guys are supposed to mutually help each other grow on the path to holiness. Don't try to control their life in any way. Don't try to change them. Don't date a fixer-upper. Okay, number three, the walking hormone. This is the emotional guy. This guy has problems controlling his emotions. Quotes, the type of guy might say to you. Um, things like, if you loved me, you'd show me. What's the problem? We've done it before. Don't you like me? And I feel like you're not attracted to me if you don't do this stuff with me. These guys are dangerous because it's like they're tricking you into doing things with them that you aren't comfortable doing or that you shouldn't do. Here's a quote that they say, which I really like. When women begin to doubt or ignore the voice of their conscience, they become their own worst enemies. If you have doubts about something that, like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be doing this, or, oh, I don't know if this is good, or, oh, I don't think we should have done that, you're guilty about something, that is, that means you have a conscience. So don't ignore that, and don't think that's bad to feel guilty for something that maybe you did or that you just aren't sure of is a good thing. You have a conscience and that's good and your conscience is telling you no, so don't let anyone try to smooth talk you into doing something. So these emotional guys can be pretty dangerous and yeah, you want someone who is emotionally mature who can lead you to God. Number four, the smooth criminal. This guy is basically a walking hormone with enough intelligence to make him dangerous. These are the type of guys who pretend to respect you, but actually they don't. Okay. Boundaries are important in relationships. You should have them. You should decide on them together and you should keep each other accountable for those boundaries that you set. Now, the smooth criminal will respect your boundaries. However, if you cross those boundaries, he basically won't stop you. Okay, say you're in a relationship with someone and this guy is super sweet. You have set this boundary where you don't want to have sex before you're married, which if you are Catholic, you know that this is the way to a chaste relationship. Okay, so you have both agreed that you will not have sex before you are married. But you feel like you're the only one who's really trying to enforce that. He's kind of just like, eh, whatever, you know, yes, I respect you. And then one day you get put in a situation where you're alone in a room and things are getting a little heated. You feel a little unwary and... He doesn't say anything. He doesn't say, hey, I don't think we should be doing this right now. Instead, 
he lets it go on and he gives you free reign to do whatever you want because he's respecting you and you end up sleeping with him that night. Okay, so first of all, that's not respect. He did not respect your boundaries because when you were weak, he did not help you become strong. So that's kind of like Adam and Eve. They weren't supposed to eat the fruit, but then Eve went and ate the fruit and Adam didn't stop her. Adam wasn't respecting God's word when he let Eve eat the fruit. He was supposed to keep her accountable because this was their boundary and they both crossed it. So yes, it's both their fault. So if a guy is like this, where he doesn't actually respect you, but he only pretends to, this is, this is an issue and this is not okay. He won't pressure you into doing anything, but sometimes these guys will make you feel like because they're so good and they're not pressuring you to do these things, then you feel like you owe them and you feel like you want to give them these things and they'll take it. That's the problem. They won't say, no, I don't think this is a good idea. They will say, give it to me. Sure. And this is tricky because that's manipulative. And a real man, instead, if he has a pure heart, he will remind you of your standards when the two of you are about to forget them. So the man you should date is the man who actually respects you and keeps you accountable for your boundaries. And this is a two-way system. You guys have to both be accountable for each other. So if one person is getting weak, the other person should be the strong one and say, hey, I don't think this is a good idea. I don't think we should be in a room alone together. Why don't we open the door? Or why don't we go for a walk? Let's avert our attention. And you guys should both be doing that for each other. Okay, number five, the control freak. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. This guy is trying to control you, basically. So this guy will behave badly and then blame it on someone else. Or he makes you feel like you need to apologize even if it's not your fault. Or he tries to control the way you dress. Or he always wants to know what you're doing, who you're talking with. Maybe you're not allowed to talk to some people. He tries to keep you away from your family, things like that. He will have mood swings. He will be super sweet and then all of a sudden he will be very angry at you. This is, this, these are red flags, okay? He acts like a victim instead of taking responsibility. Um, and you always feel like you're living according to his moods and wishes. These are just some of the things, and if you read this book, you'll see they have a whole bullet point list of these red flags to be aware of. And sometimes when you're in a relationship, other people will see things that you don't see. And so always remember to have good friends, like other girlfriends who can keep you accountable and listen to them. Take their advice because sometimes when you are head over heels for someone, you're not thinking straight and bad things might not seem so bad. And so it's important to always be alert and don't be mistrustful of people. Okay, don't, don't, don't do that. Obviously, in your relationship, you need to trust each other. If you can't trust each other, then you also need to rethink your relationship. Um, but you should be aware of red flags. And so if you can't see it, but your friend can, maybe you need to, you need to think about that. So don't date the control freak. All right, number six, the older guy. I don't know how I feel about this one because I know some people who have married people who are like way older than them well not way older than them but it seems like they're older than them and so it really just depends you just have to be wary of these guys and i think what they're talking about in this book is if you're 17 and the guy is 30 but if you're if you're say 30 and the guy is 40 maybe you're both mature enough maybe it'll work out but i just think that what they're talking about in this book is you should be cautious. And one thing that they point out is, think about this. When I am his age, would I consider dating a guy who is my age? So if, if you're 30 and the guy is 17, would you date him? 
if that's a joke to you, then don't date someone who's 30 if you're 17. Um, that's basically what they're saying. Number seven, the potty mouth. Here's a quote that I really like from this book. The speech of a man discloses the intentions of his heart. Whatever he's saying is what is in his heart. Usually, usually. Sometimes people will lie, and if you suspect lying, that's a red flag. That's, that's a whole other thing. But, typically, when people speak from their heart, if they are always talking badly about people, or gossiping, or swearing, or just saying things that they shouldn't say, then don't date this guy. Anyways, that's basically the, the potty mouth. Number eight, the tearful cheater. If a guy cheats on you, that's reason enough to end the relationship. It doesn't matter how hard he apologizes, like, no, I'm sorry, I didn't know what I was doing, it was an accident, I won't do it again, I promise, all these things. Okay, yes, you need to have forgiveness, and sometimes... There can be situations where you can forgive someone and everything can work out in the end. However, you need to be cautious because this is not always the case. And especially if it happens again, that's when you should say no. Number nine, the spiritual midget. This is the guy who acts spiritual, but he isn't, or he's not actively growing in his faith. If you are Catholic, then you probably want to marry someone who's Catholic, and the point of a marriage is to grow in union with God and with each other. But always God comes first, and your spiritual life comes before your relationship. And this is really important because Sometimes people will date because they want to feel loved and it's tricky because if they don't have a good spiritual life, then they are trying to make a god out of their boyfriend or girlfriend. And nobody's perfect. No human being is like God. We make mistakes and you should not make a god out of someone. You should find God before you find your husband. And so if your own spiritual life is lacking, you should not be pursuing a relationship right now. So the spiritual midget, I'm trying to think of how to describe. Okay, this guy, maybe he's not Catholic. Okay, so if you're Catholic and the guy is not Catholic and you want to marry someone who's Catholic, then don't date him. Don't sell yourself short. If he does not have a good relationship with God, he's not going to help you have a good relationship with God. He may have plenty of questions, but he won't spend time looking for answers. So perhaps you're Catholic and you're dating someone who wants to be Catholic. And he has all these questions about God and becoming Catholic and all this stuff. And oh, you think that's so great. But if he's not doing anything about it, then there really is no point. You're not responsible for his spirituality. It's not your job to... Okay, this is tricky because you are called to evangelize and you are called to lead others closer to God. However, that's as far as it goes. And their relationship with God is between them and God. So if they need to work on that, let them work on that before you start a relationship. So I think, I think that's what the spiritual midget is all about. Number 10, guy to avoid. Mr. I don't have enough social skills to meet girls without the internet. We all know those dating apps, um, things like Tinder. I don't even know what all of them are called. Uh, Catholic Match, Christian Mingle, things like those. Okay, these, these are good. Well... Maybe not all of them are good, but these can be good to help branch out and find someone. Yeah, okay, a lot of people meet through these apps and they work out. So 
I don't think this book is saying don't go on Catholic Map, but you should be aware because sometimes guys will go on these apps because they don't actually want to talk in person. And people can lie on these apps. People have gotten scammed on these apps. And so you just have to be aware of these things. Maybe you can meet online and then meet in person and then from there be in person. But if the whole relationship is online, then... Mm. I was never on a dating app, but I have done long distance relationships before. And it's really hard. It can be a good thing because you really have to grow in communication and communication is the big thing in a relationship. However, long distance relationships don't always work out. So if you meet someone online and you have to be long distance and you're just online the whole time, it's hard to know who this person really is. So I think you just need to be cautious of these dating apps. Okay, that is it for the top 10 guys to avoid. Top 10 guys to avoid. One, the flip-flopper. Two, the problem child. This is the fixer-upper. Three, the walking hormone, the emotional guy. Four, the smooth criminal, the one who pretends to respect you, but doesn't actually respect you. Five, the control freak. Six, the older guy. Seven, the potty mouth. Eight, the tearful cheater. Nine, the spiritual midget. And ten, the I don't have enough social skills to meet girls without the internet. All right, well, those are the guys to avoid. I hope you liked my video. Please subscribe, uh, like the video, and I hope to see you again soon.